Hey guys, Ben CB here and thank you for joining me for today's hand breakdown, which is a new format. I will do more of these hand breakdowns in the future. No worries, I will keep doing live plays. Uh, I will keep producing hand reviews, but I think that hand breakdowns are very, very important for your progress as a poker player. I know it is not so yeah, filled with the action as a live play. It is not so exciting, not so thrilling, but it is important. It's important to develop the range awareness, to develop uh, confidence in your range, to read your opponent's ranges and be able to make decisive uh, conclusion or make, yeah, be very decisive in game when you know how your range is constructed. It will take some time, but it is important to do these hand range or hand breakdowns. And I'd like to take this opportunity here to thank all the guys that have submitted hands. As I mentioned, we are going to do more of these in the future. So if you want to have your hand analyzed, check out my blog. There I explained in detail how it works, what you have to do to me analyze your hand. Today we are going to uh, work around with Pure Solver and with our Ranger. And this hand played in the big 45, 220 people left. Willen is a good rack. He did not have any information for his game. And we have Ace 9 off in the big blind with effectively 29 big blinds. The cutoff here um, open raises from the cutoff and redefend from the big blind with Ace 9 off. Pretty standard. Rejamming is probably also slightly profitable, but I think the flat call is better. Um, I will also give you some advices um, with which hands to rejam with, which hands to bluff 3-bet, which hands to 3-bet for value in, in a short moment. So um, on the flop, Villain's, uh, Hero says that his sizing is too small, so I would elect to all raise my to raise my value hands like boats, trips, and my stronger flush draws, as well as my back to flush straight draws like queen jack uh, and spades. If he was betting bigger, I would check all my weakest 10x and more flush draws. As the turn goes, check, check. Um, I came to the river with, uh, with uh, out any strong hands except pocket threes, but threes should be in his rejamming range, so he shouldn't have that in his range. And if villain is aware of that, he can easily bluff me uh, on the river. So. Here the problem is that Hero has really, really poor um, range construction on the flop already because he's raising too many strong hands and his check call range is too weak. And I see a lot of people doing many mistakes in this spot. So let's start from the very beginning. And this is originally the ranges Hero was submitting. So um, he gave Willen an open raising range like this, which I think is totally reasonable. A few words regarding the offsuited aces with around 30 big blinds. You shouldn't open all of them because otherwise blind, the blinds can be very aggressive against you. Rejam nearly any two cards against you and there's nothing you can do except calling it off very light. But uh, yeah, if your race first instead from the cutoff is getting too high, it will be very easily exploited. So be aware of that. So I would always, in general, if I if I want to get looser from the cutoff, I would always uh, favor a seven off and a six off over um, the lower off suited aces for one reason, because a seven off, a six off, first of all, has much more equity against the calling range in terms of raw equity, and it also blocks the more uh, at least a little bit of villains rejamming ranges, which is sevens and sixes. I mean. The lower pocket pairs will also be rejammed very frequently, but it's still 30 bigs, so there might be more people flatting deuces to fives than with sixes and sevens. So I would say 90 to 100% people are rejamming sevens and sixes for less than 30 big blinds, and deuces to fives maybe like 50 to 80% of the time. So especially from the small blind, um, or just calling them, even very tight players just folding them. So if I want to get looser, I would probably open raise something, something like this. And if the blinds are very tight in the button, we can also open raise uh, any offsuited ace. But um, you should be you should be very careful about your cut of open raising range. I see people open raising way too much, and it gives your opponents a lot of room to be very aggressive against you from the blinds. All right. So 
This is Berlin's range, what Hero assumes, I think overall very solid, and this is Hero's preflop defending range. This is too tight, um, this is way too tight. Willen is opening almost min race, so we should definitely, I would, I would take the uh, brown color to add my adjustments, which I would add. So I would definitely uh, defend any offsuited king, uh, any offsuited ace, queen five off. I would also defend all these hands here. Don't worry, uh, you get such a good price. You can defend all of those uh, weak holdings and you don't have to continue on so many flops. What most people think is, oh, but then I'm going to check for it very often. No worries. I will show you in a second that you are supposed to check for it very often just because you, the open raising range from the cutoff is much stronger than your defending range. You're getting a good price from the big blind. You just have to pay 1.2 uh, big or 1.1 big blinds approximately to see a flop. That means your range is much weaker. You have invested less into the pot. That means you can fold much more hands on the flop than your opponent. Don't worry, he can have an auto profit seabed on many, many flop textures, which is totally fine. He made a much bigger investment preflop to see the flop with a much stronger range. So a bigger part of the pot belongs to him. Uh, to him. So don't follow this minimum defense frequency on the flop. Don't worry, you're not getting exploited. That's totally normal. That's part of the mathematical um, aspect of the game. The minimum defense frequency applies more on the river, but this will be too deep. So let's continue here. So I think this is a very solid uh, defending range. If you feel very confident in your game, you can even add those hands, the gray hands here. Uh, oh, okay, not that wide, but this is, I think, um, very reasonable. So Willen wants to uh, three bet call these hands, which I think is very standard. I would think that um, I would, let's take blue. We definitely want to have an all-in range here. So I would definitely rejam all my pairs. Uh, I would probably prefer jamming nines here because when we three would get caught, it's very likely that there will be a few over cards on the flop. And then I would th uh, three bit call also king queen suited, ace check suited. Yeah, and frequently ace and suited and ace check off as well. I would probably also just go all in with ace check off and king queen off. And um, king queen suited, some, some people might say, say oh ben well king queen suited for 30 big blinds through red calling isn't it too much of course you can flat but th especially these days people are more odds aware so they are defending a lot of their suited broadways even like 10 9 8 so you you have really good equity in the, pre uh, in, the, in, the in the three red pot post flop furthermore you're also going to take down the pot very frequently pre-flop and if you get jammed on, you have to call it because there's still so many pocket pairs you're flipping against. You just get the right price to call it off. Again, this is like, quote unquote, the worst case scenario, but you still get the price to call it off. So in these spots, you rather want to go a little bit thinner for value. King, queen suited for less than 30 big blinds against button and cut off op opens should always be a value three bet. And believe me, in these days, there will be enough uh, opponents that even four bet jam, king jack suited, king 10, queen jack suited, king jack off, some random shit and... You will always get the odds to call it off uh, in a in a chip in the environment. This is like here in a, in, a, in a chip EV environment, and um, unfortunately, um, Hero did not give me any more information about his uh, or about the stack size distribution on other tables. So let's assume we are not in a huge ICM environment, and. Uh, if Willen has, I mean, we, we only have one table here, six players, so there are still four tables or three tables. So, um, and we have like 30 big blinds. So it's not like that we are under such a huge ICM pressure. So even though we are 20 left and it's a deep stage, I would still play this range here. And bluff three betting these hands is totally reasonable. I really like hero's range here hero's range selection i would be a little bit more um also off suited here we can also take some of the five four and six off but only frequently like 50 40 percent of the time because otherwise we're going to um yeah over bluff and then we can get easily re-exploited so um but i did this here a little bit more in pure solver a little bit more um in detail so um, 
if we if we check the out of position um, defending range, um, this is the range as you can see here. Uh, I don't want to do like an entire preflop range breakdown, but this is just the rough um, strategy we should apply in this spot here. So some of you some of you guys might ask yourself now, hey, well, why are we taking those hands? Okay, listen. So all these kind of hands, like let's say 10 8 they're just performing too good in a single race spot. If we three bet and we get four bet jammed on, it would be a waste of equity. So all those like suited connectors, suited high card hands, they're just too strong in a single race pot to turn them into a bluff. So the next candidates would be off suited hands. So let's take a look into the king seven, queen seven off, king eight off, king four. So these kind of hands, they're just playing horrible in a three bet pot. Okay. Of course, they have some blocker effects, but don't overestimate blocker effects because at the end of the day, playability is much more important than than blocker effects, right? So these kind of hands has also the benefit that we have some sort of board coverage post up. If we're only going to three bet broadways and and king x and queen x, we are never having a strong hand on a low board texture. I have to admit here that board coverage with a shorter stack size is not as important as it is with 100 big blinds because if you only three bet pairs, strong pairs and strong aces with 100 big blinds, you will never have a strong range on uh, 665, 657, all these kind of like mid slash low card boards. I don't want to get so much so deeper into that here because this will be easily a topic where you can cover two, three videos with it and talk about this for hours and, and break down the ranges and talking about all the benefits. But this is basically the general approach you should follow here. Nevertheless, if your opponent is raising and folding a lot against three bets, you can definitely take those hands because you have the immediate profit. If you play against a really good opponent, not even necessarily a really good opponent, but against a somewhat competent opponent, you're performing or you will be in, in very dicey spots post swap if you wake up with hands like queen seven off because if you look at your opponent's calling range in a three-bit pot and that is very very important it's all about how do our hands perform in a three-bit pot against our opponent's calling range uh, against all three-bit and of course like what do you want to accomplish with king seven off if you hit your king you're pretty much in the bluff catcher mode all the time you cannot just go bad 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 with your top pair you probably get bet once and then you have to start pot controlling on the turn anyway. The same on the the same on the flop. Whereas when you're six seven six five suited, you can still you're not blocking all the A size, king highs on, on dry flops, you can make place your C bet. And also your opponent's um, calling range is very defined. Very often it will be very suited ace high, suited broadway heavy, and maybe some of the suited strongest suited broadways. So it will be very easy for you to play those broadway boards. You can just give up and you're not doing any mistakes. And on those low and mid card boards, you can also easily give up with your king queen or king jack or ace jack ace ten and, and check for it some, some some of the time because you know you have stronger hands to continue with, and it will be, give you much more confidence when you know that you're basically covered on all uh, on all different board textures. Whereas when you just have broadways and king x in your in your three betting range and ace x you know, oh fuck, I don't really have any strong hands on the 665 boards or any other low card, mid card boards. So I just want to give you a quick overview about the equity we have with certain bluffs. So let's assume this is our opponent's calling range. And as you can see, it is it is fairly strong. Um, some people might even have some more like king nine suited, queen nine, jack nine suited in their range. But I think for now, it should be fine. Some slow play or every single time aces. Um, so I think that is very reasonable. And now let's just, just pick a few hands. So for example, king five off. Let's see how king five off performs. And as you can see, 34%. That is really, really poor. Um, I mean, for a bluff, it's it's not that bad. And as you can see, six, 60 suited has almost the same equity. But of course, the equity utilization is much higher. And this is always like this. The equity realization with suited connectors against a very strong range is much higher than with a hand like king five off. That means you're going to realize your equity much more often. And don't forget, you will also take down the pot preflop way more frequently. Um, let's check six five off, also 33% equity. Or a hand like eight six suited has even 36%. Um, let's take 
queen five off. And believe me, I see that very frequently. Lots of my students, they think they can three bet those hands. And even, even it's king high, queen high, the majority of the time, they have even less equity than a hand like six, three suited or six, five off, just because we are going to be dominated most of the time. So the, the reverse implied odds are very, very high in this spot. So don't take those hands uh, to three bet with. Also, since you can see there are barely any 7x, 4x, 5x hand in our opponent's uh, defending range, all the outs to make straights are clean, our two pair outs are pretty much clean all the time. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's going to be much easier to, to play those hands. We can pick up some draws, we can borrow some more turns. If you if you miss with king five off, I mean, to be honest, or king queen six, six off, you might place a C bit once, but then how are you going to, going to continue on many turns? Because there are barely any straight draws you can borrow, flush draws, etc., etc. All right. Um, of, co of course, all these assumptions um, based on uh, playing against uh, competent opponents. If you play against recreational players, and I'm always teaching that, or if you play against someone who does not like to fold against three bet, fuck your bluff three bets. Go thinner for value. Don't three bet those hands. If you see someone that has a reasonable fold to three bet, those are the hands you want to three bet with. All right. So now we have covered the preflop uh, spot. So yeah, hero should be a little bit more aggressive with his pocket pairs and go in with them and be a little bit more uh, going thinner for value with his um, three bets. Um, if again, if there's some weird ICM situation, he has to be a little bit more careful with hands like ace check off, ace check suited, uh, king queen off. I would probably then flat more of these hands, but I don't really see that given here. I also don't see the pay jump, so I can just make only assumptions. Of course, if they're about to make a huge pay jump, then I would be much tighter than that. I would probably still um, uh, still re-jump fairly wide, but we can assume we should assume that cutoff shouldn't open race that much. So then villain's range will be much tighter than that, and of course our preferred range will be then tighter as well. Uh, but this is something um, we might cover more in the future. ICM spots, how to adjust, how to, yeah, basically, um, based on the assumptions we have making the right decisions. All right, so then we are going to have the flop here. And the flop is 10, 10, 4, 2 diamonds, flush draw. And uh, here is already mentioning that a lot of his 10x hands he's check raising with. Villain is deploying a rather small sizing around one fourth pot. And I want to show you real quick um, how PO or GTO wants to play these spots. Of course, we are going to check 100% of the time. You can very well see the frequencies here. Like most of the time, we want to also slow play with aces. 40% of the time with kings and very, very, very little frequently with queens. And um, those are our bluffs here, as you can see. And we're checking 100% of the time. We're never going to bet. And one very interesting thing, because Hero mentioned villain is C betting too small. Actually, he is not. As you can see, GTO wants to bet very, very small, 75% of the time with one fourth pot size and checking 20% of the time. Why does PO want to check 20% of the time? Because as you can see here, our raising range should be very wide. On pair boards with around 20 to 30 big blinds, we should check raise a lot. And pretty much our entire range. This is the spot where you want to check raise or fold most of the time. So for that reason, we have to be careful and just check, uh, uh, sorry, quote unquote, just bet 74% of the time. If I would note lock this spot, and if I would decrease the check raising frequency, let's say down to 20 to 30%, it would be a spot where we can see bet 100%. And this is 100% given in most player pools that people are not check raising that much. I mean, just think about your game. Would you check raise 37% of the time? I highly doubt that. So that means as an exploit against most people, we should see bet 100% of the time. PO does not want to see that 100% of the time for equity protection reasons. So there are a lot of hands he wants to like to, cheat, to check back with to not get um, yeah blown off their equity. So William bets one fourth pot. And the problem that uh, Hero has in this spot is that his 
his overall range is very unbalanced. And he will have the problem later on the river. And he, as you can see, he's writing here um, that most of his 10x hands, um, he would... So I would, yeah, I would elect to raise all my value hands like bold strips and my strong or flush draws as well as my back to flushes straight draws like queen jack suited. And I know, and I'm teaching that a lot of my courses that I'm not a big fan of playing GTO, but GTO has one big advantage in a lot of spots. If you follow an overall GTO strategy um, and taking some hands out of your check call range and your check raising range, of course, it might feel very uncomfortable on future streets. But if you follow it, you will have much easier decisions on later streets. So the problem that Willen here has is that the turn is a nine of hearts. It goes check, check. I mean, with the ace nine, nine in diamonds, he has a pretty clear check call. And I think it's even, uh, as you can see here, um, ace nine on the right side, ace and spades, nine in diamonds. It's either call or fold 50%, uh, sorry, call or raise 50% of the time. So this is one of the few combos we want to check call very frequently. Uh, Hero does the same, and then on the river, he, uh, he bets his second pair with top, care, top kicker, of course, very clear value bet, and then he gets jammed on. And now he has the problem that he's basically bet folding his entire range because he's check raising all his 10x on the flop, right? So if we look at um, Hero's, Hero's range on the, on the flop, you can see that his check calls are pretty much flush draws or forks all the time. He barely has any any very strong hands. So that's that's very easy exploitable. And now he has the problem, if you can see here, blue is check raise get in, green is check call, and um, and the um, the violet is check raise bluff. So if he's coming to the flop with a 21% range, um, so 278 combos out of his uh, 1,050 combos. And of course, um, I have amended the preflop range a bit. So if I take out all these hands, I have added um, his defending frequency is a little bit higher um, he's defending around one third of the time, um, which is still a little bit too tight because as you can see here, he can easily check raise bluff a hand like king nine with king and diamonds or nine and diamonds, which has a lot of bird potential, any jack, any eight, any seven, uh, sorry, any eight, any, any, any jack, any queen, where we make gut shots or back to flush draws, we can keep barreling. And it's a board again where Willen will see bet very frequently and we also will take down the pot very often on the flop right away against a very high seabed frequency. And the reason why Pio wants to check raise a lot is that first of all, again, it's it's the board where Willen will see bet a lot of hands. And um, yeah, we also have a lot of hands that have a very high incentive to protect our equity. So for example, all four X hands, I mean, the, the few calls are some a size, um, some over pairs, like, okay, very, very, um, very, very little, like aces and kings, and uh, some a highs, and, but, but not so many, and, and 10 four suited, of course, and once in a while, a 10 nine off, and that's pretty much it, it's 4% of the time. So, and when you do that, like, your calling range is very well balanced, because if the turn are over cards, you still have some of your 10 fours, you will still have some flush draws, um, which you once in a while, um, with your back to flushes, you might hit once in a while. So it's not really that you can get exploited on, on several runouts. If the, the runout is, is low, you will have some forex you can at least call on the turn with. So it's very easy. The benefit of check raising so wide is, first of all, you're going to have a lot of 10x hands. And secondly, you will protect your equity with your forex hands. Um, and one very important thing here is even though Villain is betting one third pot, look that, or you have to be aware of that most of the time we are falling the ace highs.
And if you would, if we would follow the minimum defense frequency and will it bats one fourth pot, it means that we have to defend a lot. It means that we have to defend 70 to 80%, yet we are folding 60%, right? So you can defend prefill very wide, don't worry, and you can still fold a lot of hands on the flop. Yet we are defending 42% of the time and check raising majority of the time. What I would advise, again, this is the assumption from GTO. I would never, what I do in these bots is I would never take these ranges and now I apply them one-to-one -one in game. If my opponent is a big fish, my I would basically be very value heavy when raising. I would pretty much copy the strategy one-to-one -one that um, Hero is suggesting here, even though it's very exploitable, but a recreation player will never take advantage of that. Or if my opponent is a very weak regular a calling station, then I will be also very, very exploited, of course. But if you are have a, a much wider check raising frequency than calling frequency, you're already doing good. And I'm very, very sure that most people's strategy is something like check calling 40% of the time and check, check calling pretty much any ace high, even like probably much more king highs and check raising very, very, very uh, little. And since you have all your 10x, you can have a lot of bluffs. You also have very strong flush draws you can continue with, and then you add them with a lot of bluffs. And if someone is over defending against it or playing back, don't worry. You will have enough value hands um, you, can, you can continue with. So let's continue on the turn, the nine, it goes check, check. If William bets once more, we have a very easy call. And now on the river, a blank, hero bets, and he phases the jam. And now he's in tricky decision. And if we look at Hero's um, betting range, you can see that Ace Nine is the very top. If he bets folds nines, I mean he has threes, of course, which he's snap calling. But besides that, and the very few, and a very few slow plays. Um, so Orange he wants to check call with, which I think is reasonable. I really don't mind leading eight, seven, six is small for value. I mean. Very often a nine would be second barrel over pairs. So with fives to eights, if you just call it preflop, you can be certain to be ahead. Check calling is fine as well. Um, threes should be clear value bet. Any nine should be a clear value bet. And then we're bluffing with our busted flush draws, of course. Um, but as you can see, since Hero has so many busted flush draws as well, um, I would, I would uh, assume that his best folding range is nearly 90% of the time here, which cannot be right. And this is the problem Hero does on the flop. If you want to have a more, yeah, if you, if you like to play the more low variance approach, then on the flop, you are supposed to have more 10x in your check calling range. So when I face this spot and I know, fuck, I'm, I can easily exploit it. I'm bet folding 90% of the time here. Something is wrong with my river range. I go back to the flop or even on the turn, but since there was no action on the turn, I look at my flop range and then I would find out, okay, my check raising range is too uh, too strong. Uh, sorry, my check raising range is too strong. So maybe I should add some more hands, which um, I'm ending up bet folding on the river with in my check raising range on the flop. So I would probably take more of the busted flush draws into my flop check raising range I would take more, um, maybe more hands like queen nine, jack nine as, uh, on uh, on my flop raising range, so I don't have them as well. Um, or again, I I just had add more ten x hands into my check call range, um, but then of course um, we have to bluff a little bit less. In general, villain is a hero's check raising way too little on the flop, so. He should definitely um, add these hands here. Then, I mean, with the the diamonds, probably just um, not so frequently anyway. So it would be something along the line of that. Um, these hands for sure. Uh, I really do like that. Willen is wants to. Uh, sorry, hero. I always confound here with villain so i really like that hero wants to check for a lot of ace highs i think in general he already has a good understanding that he cannot continue with 
so many ace highs and please please guys do me one favor don't get confused now and oh how do i it looks like a super complicated spot no just take the two three um punch lines out of this video for your game and that means you have to check raise more frequently on these flop textures if it's 25 percent, it's 20 20 percent 35 percent that's I mean, you're still doing better than 99% of the players in the entire pool. And in order to make money in poker, you just have to be better than your competitors. You don't have to be perfect, right? And if you feel like you have a very unbalanced river range and you want to have a solid constructed range there on the river where nobody can exploit you or hardly exploit you, then you should maybe reconsider your strategy. And as well as not overfloating the flop with ace highs, folding more on the flop, even against such a little bet sizing and being aware, being okay with, yeah, my opponent, he's supposed to see that very right. So that's totally fine that I'm folding uh, 40% of my hands, um, even though he's just betting one fourth pot. And secondly, that you're not raising too much from the cutoff with 30 big blinds. If you take those three, let's call it bottom, uh, bottom lines out of this video and put it into your game, you will do fine you will absolutely do fine. And now imagine you do that for many other more spots, you're going to be a very, very solid poker player that has a very decent win rate. The problem, if you play an exploitative style, what Hero is doing in this very spot, and this is now, or this leads to a big problem what most players have, and I think you can relate to that. You have the quote unquote guessing game on the river right? Because GTO wise, he has to snap call. If that is his range, he's coming to the rows, he has to snap call ace nine. Otherwise he's bad folding 95% of the time. Um, and now he has to guess, is Will capable of bluffing the spot or not? Since he doesn't have any information, it's basically just flipping a coin and then make the call or not. And if you play exploitive style, you will be more often in these spots. Or let's say if you don't have the um, strategical background, strategical background knowledge in the spot, you will be in these spots very often. If you have some sort of idea of how to construct your range, how to balance your range, then it will be less a problem of you to, to, to make a good fold or to make a good decision with the needed self-confidence so that you know, okay, well, I have better hands I can call with. I have a well-balanced range even though he might bluff in the spot. Again, I, he cannot really exploit you, uh, exploit me. I will have enough hands I can call his all in with. I don't need to do it with a second pair here. Whereas when you just check call, you, you just have 4%. <laughs> I mean, balancing 4% of your range is not that hard because you exactly know you have a few A size, you have a 4-4 four, ten, ten, four suited hands, and then it will be much easier for you um, because you're pretty much coming to the row with 10-4, you're coming to the row with the ace nines, and then um, the, the, your overall strategy will lose less money. You will still be in the spot with ace nine. Don't get me wrong. There will be still hands where you are in this spot of fuck. It's like in between calling and folding, but um, your overall strategy is performing much better. And again, the, the main reason why sometimes you want to apply GTO is um, against solid opponents that we're not getting exploited that we play with the needed self-confidence, uh, with the needed self-awareness about our ranges and make good folds without uh, doubting our decision for, for lots of time and then it might influence our decisions in, in other spots. So as played, if Willen is coming, uh, <laughs> Hero is coming to the room with Ace-9, he has to call it off GTO-wise. Um, exploitatively i would say fold because it's a very close spot he still has around 20 big blinds left to have a comeback and if you look at the other stacks they aren't so deep anyway so um he's still one of the mid stacks uh, almost a short stack so i would lean more towards folding um because one thing you have to consider is here perceived since people expect you to have some 10x as low plays um, and you can have a plenty amount of 10x, I would not, I would really not uh, like to call it off with the second pair. And I would also not expect my opponents to bluff that frequently since they are basically jamming into range full of 10x 
I mean, if we're coming to the world with any tanks, of course, we're calling off these hands. Um, even I really, I really think that many people have a bluffing range of 0% and they have 9s, 4s, 3s, a strong 10 um, very, very frequently. frequently. Um, I like this I like this value bet. I mean, that you get raised on the river happens very, very rarely. I mean, like 2, 3, 4, 5% in this particular spot here. So keep that in mind. It was a good value bet. You played it absolutely fine on the river. And yeah, other your uh, the the flop um, mistake of playing too much check call. Um, um, I think it's 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 a hand you played good. Be a little bit more aggressive with your payas pre flop, and then I think you're good to go. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the format. It was yeah for the very first time. I know I'm very aware that this is much more of a dry format. Maybe not so suitable for beginners but it is important to do these hand breakdowns because otherwise you're not really able to construct uh, this range awareness which you need in game to to make good decisions and not relay on your on your guessing game okay and we're going to do that more in the future as well so especially for you guys that try to improve their game and analyze hands I want to give you some insights about how I, how I break down ranges. And I always do these kind of backwards analyzes. So actually, I start always, I mean, here I started with preflop because I knew that I, I saw it right away where the problem was. But when I want to analyze a hand for myself, which I where I also don't really know where the problem is, I always start on the river. If I see, oh, wow, my bad falling range is way too high, then I probably did the mistake on the turn. If I can still find the mistake there, I go back to the flop. And then sometimes you find the big mistake uh, happen earlier, maybe even pre-flop. You're coming to too many hands to the flop or too many hands to the turn or too many hands on the river. If you're over bluffing, under bluffing, there's always a mistake on the previous streets. Um, so I would always advise start with the river because there the ranges are the, um, are the, the smallest, the tightest, right? It's easier to, to start from the river because if you find this, the, the mistake already on the river, you're good to go, you found the mistakes and then you can go to the next hand. Whereas when you start from pre-flop, flop, like you start from the loosest ranges and it's always much harder to construct it from, from pre-flop to river. So I would always advise if you wanna analyze hands and find leaks, start from the river and then go backwards to turn, flop, river, uh, pre-flop. It makes your life much easier and um, if you if you find the mistake already on the on the river or on the turn, I mean, um, then it is less less effort, less work for you. Whereas when you have to go all the way from preflop to river, you had to go all the way from all the loose ranges on preflop and flop. It takes you much more time to get to the reverse. Whereas when the flop the mistake is on the flop, it doesn't take actually doesn't take you so much time to to get from the river to the flop because river ranges are very tight, turn ranges are very tight, and then you're already on the flop. And, um, but this is just my own preference, my own, if you, if you enjoy like also analyzing your preflop ranges and you do it for the sake of training your, your ranges and your range awareness, fine, do that, um, for the sake of, uh, effectivity and efficiency, efficiency. Um, I, I like to do it from river to, to preflop, try it out. Just an advice from my side here. And if you're interested in getting your hand analyzed, I um, encourage you to go to my blog, check it out there, and then next time I will um, ask you for, for hands, and then you can submit hands, and uh, then I'll, I will pick uh, a hand, and we will do that on a regular basis. If you have any feedback, questions, let me know, and see you next time. I'm happy that you joined today. That was Ben CB for Raise Your Edge. Ciao.